becoming a civil service a civil servant was a dream since beginning or it came on the way sir uh, going into civil services was also a childhood dream but sir uh, later on i also realized that in civil services i will be able to make a bigger impact so sir that's why i decided to go in this field sir okay so any any uh, specific project you wish to highlight which you have worked upon in the previous year so it must have yes. played a very important role in 1857 revolt so yes, can you throw some light uh, in importance or contribution of gaziabad in 1857 revolt hello nikhil how are you good afternoon hello sir good afternoon i'm fine sir good 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 so congratulations for having this interview call thank you sir okay when is your real interview sir it is on 3rd of march 3rd of march okay so close have you been to the interview earlier no sir this is the first time this is the first time okay so you had anthropology as the optional yes and uh, you did your uh, masters in technical subject yes sir so, so the computer science is not there in the optional list right yes sir and uh, you had uh, the kind of interest inclination towards this optional this was the reason or it is in trend uh so the main reason was that i had to choose one so i went through the syllabus of some of the subjects which were of my interest so then after going through the syllabus and also sir i had read a book called sapiens by yuval noah harari so i had inclination towards anthropology sir so sir these were the reasons i took anthropology so preparing for civil service exam for working professional is not that easy so how are you managing your time and energy Yes, sir. It is true that uh, we have to balance the time between the work and the preparation. So, sir, uh, for me, it is like when I uh, I go to office from ten to six. So, it's uh, in morning I get some time. I wake up at six a.m. and then in evenings from eight to ten I get some time. And so on Saturdays and Sundays are off for me. So I get time on weekends. So I manage my time accordingly and I try to do the smart work. in my preparation and uh, so that i am able to manage the work and the upsc preparation good nikhil uh, i'll be coming back to you uh, i'll be uh, giving the ball to the uh, the question volley for mr amul hello okay yes, thank you sir hello nikhil how are you hello sir i am good sir thank you okay so how has been your experience in power grid so far so power grid experience is really great it's a great company to work for work life balance is also good and the quality of work which we get to do here it's really good sir and also sir it's a feeling of pride that we are working in the power sector which is a critical sector for india and we are making a difference in the lives of the people sir okay so any any uh, specific project you wish to highlight which we have worked upon in the previous year yes sir sir i have worked in smart grid department wherein sir uh, the government's plan of rolling smart meters in india so in power grid we have done smart grid pilot projects especially smart metering in different states sir and sir based on those smart metering pilot projects now the government has come up with rds scheme revenue distribution sector scheme in which the complete roll out of smart meter will be done in states so sir that was a great milestone for myself and my team sir what we worked upon okay so you hailed from up if i am not wrong yes sir uh, so recently there was one global investor summit held in up can you throw some light upon what happened there and what are the future prospects yes sir sir up global summit was held in uh, in lucknow and sir the main aim of this meet was to bring investors and to bring industrialists in uttar pradesh for the overall development of the state in terms of its economy in terms of its health in terms of its education also and in terms of creation of employment sir in uttar pradesh so sir through this meet uttar pradesh could get a could gather 33 lakh crores of investment sir through different uh, 
industrialists and companies and investors as well so sir this is a great step for uttar pradesh to become a real developed state sir okay uh, are we having any meetings related to g20 in up yes sir we recently had a g20 meeting in lucknow last week only sir we had this meeting and the recent what, meeting what was the has... agenda what was the agenda of the meeting and any uh, highlights uh sir agenda i am not sure about uh... all right yes, okay so um, what outcome do you see as a country like if at the national level we can uh, aim to achieve with this g20 presidency that we have this year yes sir sir with g20 g20 presidency india can portray that india can contribute well for the world order in terms of its peace in terms of its climate in terms of its uh, culture the world culture which we have and in terms of sir as a peace building nation india is uh, also progressing and the world economy is now fully connected and global so sir india can play a lead role in managing all these things for the world and like we say the vasudev kutumbakam so with that philosophy india is proceeding towards g20 meetings and uh, showing a leadership role to the world okay so uh, now since you'll be switching your job in case you get selected to civil services so uh, how will you take your experience in power grid and uh, work in the administrative sector yes sir sir uh, power grid experience will be highly utilized in civil services so first thing i would say the team work which i learned in power grid will be helpful in doing the administration work and the doing the work at the ground level second sir uh, working with different players and stakeholders and private players also which we worked in power grid with that will also help me in administration sir thirdly sir i would say uh, i was able to directly work on different projects like smart metering which were of na- national importance so sir these work projects doing meeting the timeline doing as per the requirement and meeting the budget of the project so all these factors will also help me in my actual implementation of public services when while i'll be doing in civil services sir. so these will help me a lot sir okay so nikhil i have uh, one question in line what mol was also asking that you are working in you know uh, public sector and in the same domain and you have given i think 6 years around for your education there will be a overall change like from a technocrat a kind of technocrat you will be becoming a generalist so why so like uh, becoming a civil service the civil servant was a dream since beginning or it came on the way sir uh, going into civil services was also a childhood dream but sir uh, later on i also realized that in civil services i will be able to make a bigger impact so sir that's why i decided to go in this field sir moreover sir uh, i i am being a technocrat like you said Uh, sir these technologies which i have learned in my education and during the work as well sir that will come handy in my administration work or in other works in civil services so i think sir uh, this uh, knowledge will be highly utilized in civil services especially sir my computer science knowledge and digital technologies knowledge uh, since we are going mm, towards digital india in all the public services sir. so these uh, all knowledge will come handy while mm, i understand in. that's good so any graduate can appear in this exam but this optional preparation is another you know like in, i think i can say difficulty do you think that uh, upsc can do some innovative change for all the candidate to make this exam more general in nature yes sir it is true that uh, currently there are a lot of optionals are there so there, there are options for many of the candidates to choose their field sir uh, one thing which 
i may mention that what can be done is uh, uh, the 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 services which are uh, highly technical in civil services as well for example railways for example audit and accounts so sir uh, the field may be mentioned for those services that for, for example for audit and accounts that uh, chartered accountant may choose these these services and for railways some electrical engineer or mechanical engineer may choose these so sir these kind of uh, bifurcation may be done sir uh, based on some research and background study on these things sir. yeah so you are right that uh, there are some coordination required in the kind of similar services if like in railway or in audit and account even in the revenue uh, but apart from this the exam curriculum the syllabus the exam pattern so there was a committee who gave some recommendation which has not been implemented uh, which committee i am hinting to so that i am not aware about have you heard about baswan committee recommendations sorry sir i'll read about it sir okay okay so uh, anyway like uh, you have hobbies also trekking swimming rope skimming traveling So which place you traveled last? So last I traveled to Varanasi, sir. Varanasi. So, what was that place that fascinated you in Varanasi? Sir, uh, the places the Varanasi is vibe, uh, which is the the peaceful vibe which you get when you go there, and the on the ghats of the Ganga, the the. the peace you get and the ganga aarti you see and then the overall religious thing and then when you get away from your past work life and then when you reach there you see that there is a different world going in terms of all the pilgrims coming to kashi vishwanath and uh, they are they are coming with a lot of devotion and respect and after doing a lot of hard work so all these things are give a sense of purpose of life that there is a lot to do in life and lot to do for our country sir that's uh, that's good thing but religion and uh, environment right not balanced and uh, especially uh, the ganga river water what is the health and what is the status of the health of ganga river water yes. sir it is true that uh, Ganga River is a lot polluted, especially sir in cities like Kanpur and Varanasi, sir. So, sir, uh, these days government is also taking steps that they are ma- making people aware that uh, not throwing flowers and not throwing leaves and other remains of uh, puja in Ganga is a good step that the government is doing, and they are also creating awareness, sir, that. Uh, Uh, that people should be aware to keep their ganga clean also sir on the ghats there is uh, uh they they do last rites of the dead bodies sir. Mm-hmm. so that is also government is trying that lot of people should use uh, the dielectrical insinuator so that uh, the 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 problem of cleanliness at the ghats is meant, uh, is catered upon sir so all these measures as are being taken and sir more awareness has to be given for the public to be more and don't you think that to... political ideology uh, sometimes give thrust to one of the particular religion and then a particular place which is religious in nature is heavy thick and heavily impacted so uh, do you believe in the credential uh, nature or the credential factors of a particular government and will they be able to understand the equation between environment and the religion yes sir uh, they will be able to understand sir because sir ultimately for the government the main priorities are uh, to maintain the culture and to allow people to follow their culture and also sir the government's duty is to to maintain the environment clean and healthy for people to live so sir uh, the main responsibility of the government and the administrators as well to make a balance between the culture of people and the and the environment so sir by by going with the balance we can create a better world and the better city for everyone so and 
i think sir the, these steps are being taken that uh, we create more awareness among people and also we we maintain our environment and then we we go ahead for the clean clean environment sir what was the reason that uh, the incumbent prime minister chose uh, the constituency banaras varanasi and also one of the constituency in gujarat Uh, why particularly varanasi in up yes sir so sir what i believe uh, this reason is not in public but sir what i believe is uh, that prime minister might have thought to 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 put that uh, to to put a overall image that he is being loved by all people from india even from uttar pradesh which is the which has the 80 seats in lok sabha so sir uh, given the fact that uh, a prime minister's post is for all india and uh, and they should be the leader of all uh, people from india instead of being just gujarat so that message was sent that uh, the varanasi people and will also love him so that may be the reason that uh, he might have fought from varanasi sir okay. nikhil i'll come back to you again in last over to you saurabh sir hello nikhil saurabh pandey this side hello sir uh, first of all congratulations for reaching up to this point thank you very much sir uh, so nikhil you belong to gaziabad yes sir so it is said that uh, a nearby city uh, from a metro city do not have much chances to develop so in the context of gaziabad do you have the same view point sir i will say that uh, that i don't have this view point because sir gaziabad is also developing in a great way and sir rather than it's a drawback it's a opportunity for gaziabad that it's near to delhi which is a national capital and it is also giving a lot of opportunity for gaziabad to develop uh, for example sir i would say that gaziabad is now a bedding place for all the high technocrats and people who are living in gaziabad and also sir lot of industrialists are also coming to gaziabad to set up their industries because of the better connectivity better facilities better roads and also sir uh, for example we see delhi metro is also there in gaziabad and sir gaziabad being a gateway to up from delhi it is also giving it benefits of uh, being developed in terms of national highways expressways so sir i think it's an opportunity which gaziabad is uh, grabbing it a uh, in a good way sir uh, but uh, proximity of gaziabad is better than uh, noida or greater noida so still noida has uh, developed much better than gaziabad why is it so sir uh, noida and greater noida are comparatively newly developed than gaziabad sir Gaziabad is quite old and uh, the development there happened before Noida and Greater Noida and sir Gaziabad is being portrayed like i said a bedding community so residential places are more in Gaziabad and it is being fa- famous for being good residential place and sir Noida and Greater Noida are being promoted more for IT companies for industries for manufacturing plants and sir also Gaziabad is having a uh, good reputation in terms of its good environment also in comparison to delhi so sir these are the factors which differentiate noida and gaziabad so they are doing good in their own space sir okay so recently there was a news about hindan river cleaning in gaziabad a revival of hindan river so what are the issues associated with hindan river and uh, what kind of uh, like a revival plan uh, is going on sir Hindan river is currently is very unclean uh, which we have to accept sir so uh, there are some industries which are also there on the banks of hindan R- river so government is trying to uh, to shift those industries which are directly uh, uh, directly putting uh, their effluents in the river which is making the river dirty and polluted so this is one step sir moreover sir uh, the hindan the flow in the hindan river 
is also becoming a problem sir the flow is currently uh, very less in hindon which used to happen a lot in earlier days sir the main reason is sir the the feeders of that river uh, ha have been encroached by housing and by illegal construction sir so sir uh, we we have to remove those illegal constructions and we have to clear the hindon plains so that all the rain water also comes in hinder hinder and then the flow of the river is maintained so that the natural capability of a river to clean itself should be maintained and sir also the awareness among the people regarding clean, to, to to maintain the cleanliness is also being taken and sir all on the bridges which are so there ganga on... action plan phase 2 that is namami ganga project is also yes. there in place and uh, the methods that we have used in namami ganga project uh more or less uh, all those methods cannot be applied in for hindan river so what are the difference between hindan river uh, uh, or namami ganga project that uh, like we we are taking up right now so why these differences are there why hindan river uh, like cleaning has to be not different mode and namami ganga is on different mode why is it so sir i would say that uh, there is lot of similarity in the ways that uh, the action has been taken sir uh, the regarding the 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 difference sir sir uh, the ganga's path is uh, being is going through lot of villages and and all sir so so sir uh, the development of those villages are also being done in the mahavi ganga plan and hindan is sir also traveling from lot of metro cities also like gazabad and ncr region so sir uh, the development the development plan is according to that that sir uh, the okay nikhil uh, so gaziabad has derived its name from gaziuddin yes so, uh, i am i think that you are aware of this person yes so uh, who was this gaziuddin and since earlier uh, gaziabad was a part of merit constituency uh, it was part of merit so it must have yes. played a very important role in 1857 revolt so yes, can you throw some light uh, in importance or contribution of gaziabad in 1857 revolt yes sir so first question which you asked that uh, gaziuddin who was a wazir in the muhammad shah the, who was a 13th mughal emperor so uh, he named gaziabad on his own name so sir uh, and the second question sir uh, gaziabad has a, having a role in 1857 sir uh, that mu that mutiny started from merit sir and gaziabad was also a was also an integral part of merit sir uh, like sir uh, in 1976 gaza till 1976 gaziabad was a part of merit district and in 1976 it was made a separate so sir uh, be gaziabad being an integral part of merit uh, so sir Ga gaziabad played a good role in that mutiny and all those uh, sepoys who were posted in merit and gaziabad they marched towards delhi through gaziabad only because gaziabad is the gateway of delhi so sir uh, this was the main contribution area wise of gaziabad in that in that mutiny. so being in the proximity of delhi gaziabad has got as you said that it has got many advantages so there are disadvantages also like it is very polluted area so given a chance what uh, measurement you will take to reduce pollution in gaziabad yes sir uh, sir first thing which i can think of is sir there there are lot of industrial areas which are developed in Ga in gaziabad so sir we can advise those industries to reduce those emission levels and also how sir, they can you, how they can reduce because this is the major issue that industries cannot abruptly reduce their wastes or emissions yes sir, yes, sir. so how uh, sir, what measures you will do yes sir first thing sir industries are using a lot of dg these days because sir they want the reliability so sir what uh, we can do is uh, the reliability can be provided from the state utilities to supply the continuous power instead of using diesel generators which is very polluting sir second thing sir uh, the effluents which the industries are creating they should be treated locally at the manufacturing level in the inside the industries only and then after treating them then it can be sent to the municipal corporation for further treatment or sewage treatment plants or 
for some plastic treatment plants and further sir uh, for reducing the pollution especially in manufacturing these days there are technologies who capture the so2 and no2 gases there only in the chimneys of factories so that they are not thrown directly into the environment sir so these are the few steps which can be taken sir okay so do you find any ethical issues associated with artificial intelligence yes sir there are ethical issues uh, like sir for example in chat gpt which we saw chat gpt is also being used to write programs for cyber attacks so sir these are the issues which have to be resolved sir and given the fact that artificial intelligence can also intrude in the privacy of the people that they by while people are people data is available online how they search how they browse how they do their social networking site how they use them so all these data artificial intelligence algorithms are gathering and then they generate a new data out of those data and then uh, that new data might intrude the privacy of the people like sir in social media profiles we see when we browse something then they give us some ads without our consent sir so okay, nikhil so uh, which programming language we are using in chat gpt so chat gpt is uh, uh, basically a generative algorithm so sir uh, background actually i'm not aware exactly but i think uh, it's a mix of uh, different algorithms from different technologies like c sharp so as Java. it is said that it is based on natural language processing so what are the difference between natural language processing and deep learning yes sir sir uh, natural language processing is also a part of deep learning sir but sir deep learning i would say that deep learning is uses neural networks where lot of layers are also there and deep learning is a part sub part of machine learning and machine learning is a sub part of artificial intelligence sir so sir okay, deep learning good, so my next question would be that recently uh, government of india is going for uh, privatization in the space also so there is one company skyroot which is given uh, like uh, which is uh, started its own private launch of rockets so in the uh, coming generations or coming time so we will we'll see that there will be lots of uh, satellites launches uh, from india so do you think that it is going to clutter our uh, space area or is it going to be beneficial for us or it is it will create some issues in the space or will it create some space economic wars also yes sir it is true that a uh, uh, lot of privatization in space sector is coming and we'll we, are, we will be seeing lot of satellites in the orbits like sir spacex is also doing so sir it will definitely create a cluttering problem in space sir and sir uh, for that i would say that there has to be an international organization to manage those and uh, so that uh, the the amount of satellite should be in in that sphere that they should not at least clutter the space and the 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 avoidance of striking with each other and uh, the better facilities for humans so do you think that uh, we are in requirement of space governance right now that is true sir that that will be helpful sir at the world level because sir if every country will have their own but united nation is already there in the space governance so do you think that uh, or do you consider that united nation has failed in the space governance <laughs> given uh, recently that, there was one uh, balloon issue in us from china and in other areas also uh, there are a lot of space cluttering by elon musk and uh, there are some other uh, problem by other countries like uh, in india is also considered that it is cluttering the space so uh, if the united nation has failed do you think or like uh, do we need some other international level uh, space governance agency yes sir sir i think united nation is taking a good step but sir there is lot more need to be done instead of going for individual companies like you said the spacex and skyroot in india so sir uh, there has to be a collaboration between these companies to put their satellites in a collaborative way rather than each company putting their own rocket pu putting their own satellite in the space so that will clutter the space in a lot more manner sir so there is there has to be a coordination and we can have a, a one more treaty in terms of if we want to have internet from space then a, a global agency can 
put satellites in that in the space and then every country can benefit from those so, so uh, coordination so, and collaboration is so nikhil required. my last question would be my last question would be that uh, in india isro has done tremendous work but recently uh, isro has also isro it was also uh, uh, like uh, it was said that isro must engage itself in research and development more than launching of satellites so if isro does not launch satellites then it is not it will not become independent it will depend on government uh, funds so in your opinion so isro should uh, have its own arm a commercial arm or isro should focus only on research and development sir i think it is good to have its own arm as well because sir it will uh, it will create isro an independent agency at least in terms of its finances Sir, finances is an important part, and the governance which is being provided from government, it's good. And sir, this is a great step, I think, in the terms of uh, the future development of ISRO and future development of space technologies. Uh, thank you, Nikhil. Uh, over to Nitin, sir. Now. Uh, thanks, sir. Yeah, thanks, sir. So, Nikhil, uh, before we wind up, my last question: Have you heard about uh, delegated legislation? Sir, I am not able to recall right now. Sir. Delegated legislation. Sir, I am yeah. not able to recall. Right now. I'm sorry, sir. Okay. okay. So anyway, another question. Then it can be that under which article this civil services have been created, or if a new service is to be created, then under which article it will be done of the constitution? Sir, I am sorry, sir. I am not able to recall. Okay. Recall it right now. And under which article UPSC has been created? Of Indian Constitution. I'm afraid, sir, I'm not able to recall <laughs> right now. So you are going to make it a bread and butter. You must know it. Yes, sir. But I anyway, you it, sir. are a pleasant personality. Uh, Nikhil, your real interview actually nearby. Okay. Uh, not that nearby, but still, I can say, not many days left. You uh, have done well in this mock interview, and if you have a frame in this way, then I am pretty sure that you will get comfortable marks. But uh, uh, yes, but there are some areas where uh, we can do a little bit more good work. So, uh, for example, your shift from this technical domain to the general domain, right? There, like now, the question remains the same, but there are many answers. One of the answers that you give, what alternative answers can be there? Either we tell it to you, or you just make another uh, response for this. So, rather than suggesting. A kind of you know objective answer for it. You just need to uh, improvise upon the same uh, response for this uh, question. Okay, so this is this is okay. one thing. But uh, I have heard that people are saying, sir, because rather than doing BA and MA, my parents suggested to have this technical degree because UPSC. Uh, uh, you know, selection is not that way. One can say that nay, wo hi jayega. So uh, something alternatively is required, right? To to win bread and butter. So I was pretty sure that this technical knowledge and this technical degree will fetch me at least the required thing. So this was one of the thing because you have meant you had mentioned that this becoming a civil servant was uh, was a dream before. You got into the graduation years. Okay, so this is how uh, you can make the thing. And then another question was in line with the reform that UPSC need to undertake. So IRMS was thing was a thing, but then another thing was removing the optional. So Baswan committee recommendation. Okay, you may read it. It's still. Okay. The consideration was going on that the optional may be removed or not. So there used to be two optionals uh, till 2013. 2013 onward, only one optional was there. 
so there are problems ugc is having its own different take for removing the optional but upsc is having its own difficulty that is scaling system which is which has not been disclosed so far to the court also right so this is one of the thing that let's see that uh, to make this exam more general what they may do okay so but any question regarding upsc and reform undertaken by upsc is to be given in a kind of respectable way because you are sitting in upsc so wahan pe baith ke to bahut hi zyada conscious ho jana chahiye response ko leke so this is one thing then uh, we could not ask many questions regarding trekking swimming uh, rope and skipping traveling self drive so these are very normal simple words but you know uh, any of the panelist who is into the same hobby may take you along may grill you and drill you Okay, so uh, traveling then many UNESCO UNESCO recognized sites. Okay, and uh, what are the uh, what are the new plans that government of India has in it initiated to boost tourism in India? Okay, so the famous track in India. You might have read, but you can still uh, polish it more. The delegated legislation question was there. regarding current affairs okay and this is a very new information so on the same day when you are going to give the interview last minute information from that day newspaper is is very important so if one is not able to read full newspaper then all india radio news so audio if you need to listen to it that use your mobile and very easily you can gather all information in just 15 minutes time all important information at least okay and then for your optional also anthropology uh the practical aspects of it we could not ask maybe later on we will connect and uh, practical aspect as in uh, not in the optional technical detail but what will be will you be doing out of this knowledge if you become a civil servant so in your district how will you be applying it this is a kind of question that is asked always then what is the common thing in your mtech and anthropology syllabus wise and otherwise right is there any common topic taught to you in mtech and also in anthropology okay so you have to think about it not the pinpointed technical topic but some of the information related to say for example in mtech computer science so the silica silica is found at some of the uh, you know some of the places with some particular characteristic not everywhere silica is not available and silica is very important for a person who is into computer science the hardware things and all okay and uh, a person who is having anthropology then what are the developments so far they may ask this is only one thing there may be many more thing because i did not have anthropology so i may not be able to tell you so this is how and even uh, what is the meaning of your name nikhil so uh, this question we could not ask this question can be one of the first question to begin with in the interview so you may uh, tell the correct meaning of it nikhil and then they may ask that really this meaning manifest in your personality or not so i think these are the things why i am giving you idea for these questions because you are a good candidate and if uh, really you have done well in your mains and uh, if you get good marks if that day is also good uh, you will make it okay so that's how it is so saurabh sir please give your feedback yes nikhil uh, i am quite satisfied with your performance particularly in the science and technology part environment part you have done pretty well and uh, if i can say that you are a selected candidate already but you have to work upon few things from my side and i'll point it out to some part of body language so during uh, the time of interview i found that you are into lots of shaking like this you are shaking so this thing i observed so if you can manage this thing and the second thing that i find is like uh, there is some issue with uh, your voice right now like uh, are you uh, suffering from some throat infection or something uh 
yes sir, some like not throat infection but yeah a little okay. cold okay 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 that's why i found that voice is something uh, different so these are two things that i can point out nothing else and uh, one thing that uh, uh, you have answered everything very well in a balanced way so i tried to deviate to you also but you were firm in your answer but few things that i would like to say that uh, in uh, at some points i found that uh, even if you do not did not know about the answer you try to uh, go near to the answer instead of directly going towards the answer so i'll say that if you do not know something then do, uh, there is no need to go about that answer you can just uh, crisply wind it up like uh, uh, if i asked you about that uh, hindon river cleaning and namami gange project so yes there are some differences in the cleaning process of uh, ganga river and the hindon river but uh, you try to manipulate the answer so uh, please do not do this because uh, there are some uh, the answer was completely vague in that point so uh, in, re in rest of the answers i found that yes it was all 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 right so concession from my side and i think that you are a selected candidate uh, so nikhil any question that you want to ask from us sir uh, one question i have from saurav sir like sir uh, the the same thing which you said the difference between the namami gange and the hindon cleaning program so sir uh, that was kind of a general question also and there can be an exact answer also so i thought it's a general question so i attempted but i don't know if like so should i directly say that uh, i don't know sir or i'm sorry sir kind of that no 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 uh, see uh, this is a general question but yes it is pertaining to your def also because you belong to gajabad so yes. what is the difference between namami gange project and uh, this uh, uh, hindon river cleaning project is that namami gange project involves ganga and this is a large river and it involves lots of uh, uh, like uh, processes like we have to clean ganga river and uh, we have to clean the banks of ganga up to 5 kilometers we are uh, implementing organic farming near the ganga river banks so all these things we are not doing at hindan river right so we are what we are doing is we are doing the surface cleaning of hindan river and uh, we are also restricting the throwing away of uh, waste material in hindan river and this thing we are doing at ganga also but yes ganga involves lots of other processes also that we are not implementing at hindan river that's it very simple so this if i was not aware then i should have said sir i don't know instead of making uh, a general uh, yeah as far as i know you can start with as far as uh, i can recall or i can say i can uh, i know aur uske baad fir aap you can say these things okay sir yeah oh. okay uh, nikhil uh, or any of the question additionally in addition to these uh, this mock interview if uh, any of the question is there we if we feel that this is useful for you we will send it to you and you we feel very free uh, rohan will connect uh, either of us right amol saurav me for any of the doubt okay. and uh, when your real interview is over we request that please tell uh, your response that kaisa raha us din ka interview it's good to hear always okay so all the really very best and do well i hope that you will make it uh, best of luck nikhil Thank you sir. Yeah.